would like to thank our sponsors, Ocean Stone Architectural Lighting. Fully customizable trap lighting systems for your home. All controlled by an app on your phone. From individual lights to full color spectrum of lights, it's easy to use. You can set timers for special events or seasonal lighting. And what I find really cool are the preset patterns and animation. To get a free quote for your home, go to OceanStoneLighting.com. Welcome to the Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. I'm Nate Augsburger. I'm CJ. I'm Chef Rock. The podcast that brings you an elite perspective into MLR rugby. Welcome to another episode of Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. I'm your host, CJ. And joining me on another episode this week is, if not the best scrum half in the MLR, a U.S. Eagles in the 7s and 15s, and a San Diego Legionnaire, Nate Osberger. What's Yo. happening, Nate? Yo, happy to be here. Happy to be here. Right on, right on. Also joining us, our other co-host, um, the world-famous celebrity chef, the host of Chef Rock Show, that you can find on pretty much any streaming service. Chef Rock, what's happening, my brother? How my how my boys doing? Good. You guys good, have a good Fourth of July. I did, I did, man. We had a good time. I went and spent some time with my mother. Uh, you know, COVID nineteen nice. and this, uh, you know, social distancing. We have to stay apart from each other. But we did the garage thing. So we, uh, she brought a plate to the garage. I actually sat on one nice. side of the garage, she sat on the other side, and we left the door open. So it's outdoors. They tell you that. The virus less spreads less when it's outdoors, so we let the garage door open True. and stuff, and uh, had some fans going, so it was pretty cool. So, how about you, Nate? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I, uh, I did barbecue. I did barbecue. That's part of our our culture, right? On the fourth, yeah. got the barbecue in, bought a couple sparklers, made it a little festive. My wife went to work, and when she came home, I had the house decorated with a few few little things, you know, oh. some red, white, and blue. Look at you go. Okay. It's one of her Let's favorite holidays. It's one of her favorites. So uh, yeah, I did nice. that. But I guess, uh, guys, you'd say mission accomplished. I barbecued enough brats, burgers, and chicken on Saturday yeah. and not have to cook on Sunday. So That's awesome. That a boy. Plan ahead. I've done well. He's, done he's also, proud, he's chef. also a very good husband. Look I am that. proud of you. I try and be really good at that too, CJ. Yeah. No, it's not, it's, that's good. I'm learning. I, I've, been, I've been with my wife 22 years, and um, – Every year I learn that I'm not – I should do more. So I don't know how much more I can do. <laughs> but, uh, so now I figure if I, I, I'm going to decorate for the 4th of July from now on. There you and, go. And that's, that's another thing I do. So Take some cues from Nate. So we'll figure it out. That's right. <laughs> so that's a, we, got, we got another great episode for you this week. You know, Nate always brings on guests that actually uh, enlightens the show, enlightens our guests and our listeners and myself. So I'll let Nate go ahead and introduce our guests, and uh, we'll go from there. Go ahead, Nate. Knock Sounds good. Sounds good, CJ. Uh, so we got a special guest um, hailing all the way from Fiji. Uh, one of my teammates from San Diego Legion, also one of the uh, nicest, hardest working human beings that I know. Um, I put him on my list of favorite teammates all time. Uh, he came over and was quickly found in rugby in America at the club level, playing for Belmont Shore. And um, I actually watched him play in the D1 final against Mystic River, which is a team that I played against all the time out in the East Coast. And uh, he was a stud. He was a stud then. He's a stud now. And here he is. <laughs> we got Kenny Nasogengi. What's up, brother? What up? What up? What up? What up? you say the last name again, Nate? It's Nasogengi. Nasogengi. Right, Kenny? Did I do it justice or yes, what? Yes. Yes. I won't so, try to say right. it. <laughs> yeah, you know, Kenny's a Kenny's a fan favorite, and obviously he's got the great smile. Uh, he, he looks like Kenny. You look like you in shape right now, so that's good to see too. Um, but uh, yeah, man, Kenny's a special person. Um, I love him, love him to death, and I'm happy to have him on here. So, uh, without further ado, Kenny, man, if uh, you could enlighten us, just describe a bit about your journey to the states and coming from Fiji. Uh. Firstly, uh, thanks for having me, man. Um, I, flew, I came over from uh, Fiji uh, 2014. I uh, came over to visit family up in uh, Sacramento. And then rugby brought me down to Long Beach, Belmont Shore. Uh, that was 2015, so I played at Belmont for three years. Uh, seventh and fifteenth. Uh, 2018, I was still – it was still uh, – in season, I, I was talking to Holtz. 
Rob Holdley, our coach. Um, and then uh, he brought me into Legion. That was the best decision Here you are. ever. Yeah, Here I am. exactly. Yeah, I am. And then, hey, Kenny, if you can describe just like a, a bit about like that Fijian spirit. It's so strong and uh, it's definitely something you portray, whether you know it or not. It's something that like rubs off onto other people. It's definitely rubbed off onto me. So can you describe what it, like that difference between, you know, being in Fiji and your, your upbringing all the way to kind of like your experience in America a little bit? Uh, I'd say, uh, cause Fijians, uh, we have our culture, like culture comes first. So we have our religion, which is first culture and tradition and values comes with that. So respect, stay humble, uh, all those stuff. So that's, that's what took, got me here i'd say that that's what got me here just staying humble to everyone respect your elders um i think that's the difference of uh i wouldn't say americans i'd say kids because i've coached kids that uh i'm hard-headed i just <laughs> i just wish yeah, you was in fiji <laughs> I'm, I'm like man i just wish you was in fiji man like mm. that yeah you know, it's funny, Kenny. Just the, the bringing up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I've 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 had so many different, um, not necessarily all Fijian, but Polynesian teammates over the years, and I've said it before, man. Like there, there is something about the guys, the Polynesian boys who were born in America that I've gotten to play with, but then they they go back to to their to Tonga, to Samoa, yeah, to Samoa. Fiji, whatever. <laughs> And they go back from like what six years old until they're like twelve, and then they come back to America. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's definitely uh, something about your guys' culture that just it 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 really really builds something, and, and it's special. It's kind of hard to even describe, but it's a special character uh, in them, and, it, and it's all it's about selflessness and community yeah. and brother, and, and you know, like I said, brotherhood. So. Um, you know, I love that you always share, you've always been the type of person who's, uh, you know, reflected that in the way you carry yourself. Yeah. What's it, what's it like growing up in Fiji? Uh, what's it like? Because what you just said to me, what's interesting is that the ki- young kids are more willing to listen. And you didn't, you didn't yeah. say the exact words, but you, you, you were saying yeah, yeah, yeah. To listen there. We're here yeah. in America. Kids are like, oh, you're my coach, but I'm going to do it my way anyway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What's it like, that experience growing up in Fiji? Because uh, you've got to be humble. That's what I learned because, as Nate Dog knows, I'm in that MMG group because uh, I grew up in church. So I was taught when I was a little kid is do to others what you want others to do to you. So if you give respect, respect They'll give it back to you if you yeah. humble yourself like that. So yeah. um, I'd say my religion kind of helped in that and then my parents. So you, you, had, you come from a strong background where your, your parents are the foundation. They laid, 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 they laid the foundation for you and you just followed suit. And uh, man, yeah. that's good to see and that's good to hear, especially if you're coaching in America. I definitely yeah. want you to coach more like that. I want you to teach kids because I see kids all the time and be in the store cussing out their parents. You know, yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? So I want to go up and grab them and shake them, you know. So yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> the sports sports are sports are something that brings people together, can unify people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you teach them at, at a young age good values and and respect and, and being humble and stuff like that. You know, that's, that's yeah. awesome, man. I really appreciate that. I'm sorry, Nate, I cut you off in your questions, but I just... No, no, to... no, that was brilliant. That was brilliant, CJ. Yeah. Fire, so. fire away, man. And, and the other thing to add to that, and me and Kenny were talking about it a little bit uh, last night in preparation and stuff, was, uh, you know, I've, I've been to Suva, and I, I've, um, I've been to Fiji twice. I've been to Suva, and I was there recently. And it is just so amazing, like, to have people seeing us uh, training the USA team training and they come and they watch or once we finish, they take over the field and they start playing touch, playing touch rugby or uh, the ocean, you know, the high tide. And then once it goes low, it goes low for like freaking how, how long Kenny, like hundred, hundred yards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when the tide's down, everybody's out on the, on the beach now, 
and, and they're playing touch rugby. Touch. It's just <laughs> the sport is just like the charisma around it. The the way and and you're right, CJ. I think that's that's my point. Is like so unifying in the community. They come together and. Um, that's just it's just amazing, Kenny. I'd imagine you've played in quite a few of those uh, those yeah, touch games yeah. out there. Huh? Okay. Playing with playing with empty water bottles, uh, using it as rugby balls. Yep. Yeah. Oh wow. I'm, okay. That's how you stay humble, right? I mean, yeah. in America, it's like we're you spoiled. know, kind of kind of got a silver spoon almost. We're you know. Yeah. We're yeah, we're we're, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. You know, we're spoiled, and we try to. You know, we. Don't respect the 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 real truth of, or, or maybe the bare bones of a game of a sport. Like you had to play with you know, water bottles and stuff like that. You know, people don't really know what that feels like because the kids who are playing rugby here, they they ask their parents, "Can I get a rugby ball?" and they go get them a rugby yeah. ball. You know what I'm right. saying? They, right. they find it for them. So you know, I I mean, again, that that's 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 good to see and that's good yeah. to know that you're humble like that and. Uh, you know your size, man. You six four. You're a big man big too. Man. So, and if you look at a little, I don't understand why a little kid looking at you and he gonna give you a hard time. I'm like, I'm look, I look at you as a grown man and say, hey, bro, what you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, you you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I still have kids that, that just, hey, coach, I can take you down. That's all American. Like, that's, that's American that's right. attitude. No matter how big you are, we can beat you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, take you down. Yeah. Hey, Ken, Kenny, I had, a, I had a culinary question for you. First off, uh, am I pronouncing the name of your town right? Uh, La, uh, Lautoka? Lautoka, yeah. Is that yeah. the name of this? Lautoka, yeah. which means it, it, the, next, the, the fun name of it, it's called um, Sugar City, right? Yeah. They, they grow a lot of sugar cane there, sugar which is really yeah. cool. But I, but I looked up what the name Lautoka meant. And do you know what it means? You probably do. I right? learned it when I was a little kid and – I, yeah, I thought it was a little bit of Fijian history. It means bullseye. So when you score a try, do you yell out, No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that if I score a try. <laughs> you know, and yell, and yell out my name, too. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Rock, <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably don't know this, but... Um, there's a large Indian population in uh, Lotoka, correct? Yeah. yeah. So how does that affect the culture of the food when you have a Fijian style of food and Indian style of food? That, how do they mesh over there? I'd be curious to try some of the, the dishes. Curry. Um, curry, yeah, that's where we got the curry from. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And English, too, right? You guys have that English background. Yeah. Right? Uh, so I was lucky to have a, a Muslim and a Hindu neighbor. Okay. So okay. We celebrate Eid with them. They uh, had nice. uh, Diwali. They would give us sweets. So, and we were like, Christ, like we grew up in church. So right. that diversity of religion was like, they respected our holidays, nice. we respected theirs, and mm. their food, man. You should try Fantastic. some of their food. Yeah. No, I would, I, I'm already drooling because I, I love Indian food anyway, yeah. Yeah. but just the culture of the Fijian food and the Indian food together, yeah. Yeah. and that must be well, with all the fresh fish and you know all, all the produce that you guys grow. Uh, yeah. Hey, I wanted to mention the one thing, guys. I, I get all my questions in at once. I feel like a reporter at the White House. Um, <laughs> Fake news, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, bro. But, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of famous people that come out of your town, and I'm sure you know who they are. Uh, you got uh, Waga Blake, right? The rugby player? Yeah. Waga yeah. Blake. You got Nathan Hughes. Nathan Hughes. I went to school with him, yeah. Yeah. No kidding, really? And, yeah, yeah. Really? and there's one guy I didn't even know, VJ Singh, the golfer. It's from your hometown. Yeah, that's right. Is a golf. Uh, he owns a golf course me, now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Big golfer. That's it. That's all I got to say. Now that's yeah. the chef, that wraps up the chef rock portion of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a story. I got to tell. No, I like it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just I'll kidding. So, so yeah. maybe, 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 chef, you invite him on your show and you can talk, cook up some Fijian food. 
and, and let's do it. Food. He could come let's make it happen, man. And serious. do all that stuff, you know, make it, make it uh, real make serious. It's a connection that works, you know? No, that would be fantastic. If you know, do you cook a little bit, Kenny? I love cooking. Okay, so you're already booked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenny, Kenny cooks, man. Kenny cooks. I mean, nice. it's like it's like Kenny. The way you're talking about, like uh, you know, sharing food and and with your neighbors and stuff like that. It's, you know, yeah. with in our rugby journeys, we tend to have roommates, which are teammates. Yeah. And uh, I think the last couple of seasons, I've been over to Kenny's residence, where there's a couple other yeah. guys. A couple of Fijian guys as well. Save would be over there the cooking as well. Yep. And, they, and they'd make a great, great curry. And oh. uh, you guys were always so damn nice to me and would make sure I get fed first. You'd give me, like, probably the biggest plate. Make yeah. sure I get seconds first. <laughs> it's different. Oh, that's it's nice. just different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, the hospitality nice. is it's like, you know, and yeah, it's second and nature. You ain't coming to my house getting fed first, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying that right now, buddy. Kenny, what's uh, for seconds too? <laughs> just, just out of curiosity, Kenny, what's your guys kind of like? You guys feed the elders, elders first, then kids, then then the cook eats last, or what's your guys kind of yeah. order for? That's it, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the elders, the the kids, and then the moms, because they're the ones that pro- that that prepare all the stuff, mm. so they eat last. Kenny, when you say elders, where's that age start? Oh, like dads, grandpas. No, I mean, like age. Right now, I'm actually uh, in the senior senior category. (laughs) I'm just thinking where my line is. Where do I stand in line, okay? If you're a dad, dad, if you're a dad, then you get pissed, man. I got to be the elder of the crowd. I can get into into Costco an hour early now. (laughs) I I I used to eat first in my house until the kids came. And I, I, I came, but, you know, I used to yeah. get my plate first. My wife told me to get my plate first. Yeah. And now all of a sudden the kids come, they get to eat first. And I'm sitting there watching them eat. And I'm like, where's my plate? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to have my wife talk to you, bro. And I'm going to tell her what the rules are. Okay, she okay. She feeds me first. Then she feeds the kids. And then yeah. she feeds herself. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, Kenny, yeah. I'm going to you get, I'm gonna give you my wife's number. And give you how to give her a call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the tradition. They got things in line. Well, okay, hey, Chef, Chef was kind of alluding to it. There's been some obviously some great players that come out of uh your home your hometown, uh, Kenny. And uh Fiji, for those who don't know, obviously rugby followers would know, but for those who don't know, Fiji is kind of the king of the islands right now. They're one of one of the t- top three every single year in sevens. Right, and they won the most re- recent Olympics, and their 15s team. Um, gosh, they're they're special as well. And they went to World Cup, and they played really well. They had players that stood out, like Semi Radrala, and um, so they're they're both their teams are very good, and I'd say they're both better than Samoa and Tonga at this point right now. Um, Kenny, if you can just kind of enlighten us on um, like. Why is why is rugby so big in Fiji, and why is it like everybody's at their core the love, uh, like the game that they just love, you know? Uh, Fiji, uh, rugby in Fiji is kind of like football over here, like the love of the game. But as I was telling Chef earlier, uh, I was fortunate enough because my mom was working <coughs> for tourism, the tourism industry. So we went, we went up to this uh, resort, which was way up in the mountains, and they didn't have TVs. They, didn't have, they, they were drinking from the, the river water, but wow. all they knew was rugby. They didn't know what uh, soccer was, no volleyball, no any other sports, just rugby. So I, I, me from the city, I was like, wow. Because I took a, a soccer ball with me, and they were like, what is that fool? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, is, this is in Fiji, but way up in the mountains. Yeah. And I was like, and, wow. That's amazing. And there's so that, much. That, that, yeah. Go ahead, Kenny. Go ahead. No, it makes, you, it makes you think this is what rugby means to these people. Because especially me being from the city, and they are, they are way like, this is like, I think it was like a six-hour drive inland towards the mountains. Wow. Wow. So would they, would they be – 
they would find a way or travel to go to watch the sevens compete, like maybe at the Olympics or something, Kenny, or like who, who did you watch growing up? Like, I know everybody loves it. Like they get in front, they go find a TV to watch Fiji. Play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a big uh, Fiji rugby sevens fan. I grew up watching them. White Silas, the uh, William Ryder, Vunin Baka, all of those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, if you remember, Nate, uh, I think it was last year, they had a, a video going, a picture going viral about people going up in the mountains just to watch TV. Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah, I do remember that. That, that, was, yeah. that, that was my mom's village. Because the, wow. the, the network, they didn't have the connection where their village was. So they, they, they walked to the mountain where, where they had connection and they had to go set up the TV there and just watch. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, that's a Nike commercial right there. That is. <laughs> you know? That is. And, uh, yeah, that picture went viral. Oh, you know, I bet. Yeah, yeah and that's I've, I've cool. been to, I went to, I played sevens at Gold Coast. Um, we stayed at the Shangri-La, and we're in, we're in the rugby town, right? That's what, where that tournament is. Singapore, um, yeah, yeah. In Coast, is it Coral Coast? Coral Coast. Coral Coast. Coral Coast, that's right, not Gold Coast, sorry. Coral Coast, and I was there for sevens, and that's Rugby Town. And, man, like, Wasali Serevi, just, like, it's such a big, big tradition there. And, yeah. Kenny, so Fijians and, and other island, like, athletes, right, you guys are able to get visas to play professionally. Any, like, Fijians are all over the world in professional rugby. They're in yeah. France. They're in the, the um, U.K. They're in New Zealand. They're in South, like they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and and they, they're so dang good at rugby. And there's almost like a skill that you guys have that like, yeah. it's just known. It's like Fijian rugby. Um, yeah. But for, for you, you know, all these guys go professional all over the world. Uh, how, it is, how is it being an American professional? Uh, there's a good thing and a bad thing about it as me as a Fijian because uh, people see me, they say, oh, he's Fijian. And their expectations is just through the roof. Uh, oh, he can <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I'm like, man. So if I don't perform, then th uh, that makes me look bad. But on the good side, I use it as fuel. makes me work harder. Like, because their expectations, they want me to, they expect this of me. So I get to work harder in the gym, on my skill set, at training, at practices. Awesome. So... Yeah. So it gives you a little fuel. Gives you a little yeah. fuel. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Kenny, qu question for you, quickie. Um, you're, I know you're a big guy, 6'4". Now, I know over a lot of the players are from Samoa or, or Tonga are big men. I mean, there are always big guys that come over and play, not just rugby, but football. And on, on your island, is everyone big? Or is it that just uh, – Not really <laughs> Not really. No, okay. uh, I was I, 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 I was skinny when I came over here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Five, I, I, well, five foot two. I think I was, what, what were you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was one ninety. I'd say one ninety. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then I met uh, American food. Did oh, yeah. food. <laughs> McDonald's. <Yeah. laughs> All that stuff that ain't good for you. All that good stuff. Put it right in the men's yeah. section. Right? <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky it made you taller. It made me wider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It made me wider. That's just, too. That's just the TV, Chris. That's just the TV. Yeah. It made me wider too. Small. <laughs> yeah, oh, Fijians, well, Fijians are incredibly, incredibly gifted. Like, you know, um, Chef, if you if you were to watch like a sevens game, or even their fifteens, like they're not all big guys, but man, they all move. They, they all, all move, move quick, and they're all strong. physical. So, Kenny, I think that's a good question. I think a lot of people who watch rugby would want to know, like, where does that, where does the the switch get flipped for for Fijians, and where do, where does that come from? That competitive nature, like once these guys are on the field, like Kenny seems like the nicest guy in the world, and I know you guys see it right now, right, right, but like. If he's on the field and you're on the other team, like it's 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 going down. Like it's, it's, it's no regard. It's no regard. I mean, Kenny uh, against New Orleans last year in 2019, right before the playoffs, he broke his arm in the 66th minute and then finished the entire game. Mm -hmm. And not only did that, he made like four or five more like big tackles wow. after he had done it. 
you know, we obviously praised him and we missed him dearly in that final that we lost in the final seconds. But can he hit, hit us with, Wow. You, can you put a finger on where that comes from, you know, or is it just an aggression that you got, that you just, everybody has? Uh, I'd say, uh, cause when I was playing rugby back home, we would, we would say this every time, cleats on, switch on, boots on, switch on. So, so whenever you put those cleats on, you got to switch on. I mm. think that's, that's what the Fiji team uses too. And I think that's when, if you, if, like, during warm-ups, you'll see them joking around. You'll see us joking around. But when, when the cleats on, it's oh, on, man. Yeah. yeah. You flip the switch for intensity. Yeah. yeah. Right? And just go all out. Balls it's like out. Once, you, <laughs> once you cross the line, it's – it's no, it's no more messing around. It's business. No. Yeah. And and how about how does that carry over when you go up against uh, other other Fijian guys in in the MLR? Oh, because he, you guys go after each other as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, you know your boy really? on the other side. Yeah, know your boy on the other side, and and like they they go for each other. It's good yeah. to see. Wow. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. You can be friends off the field, but. If you on if you wearing the different jersey, that <laughs> so you're pretty much saying it's like an unwritten agreement. On. Like it's unwritten. It's just like your mind. Um, listen, yeah. man, I I get it because I I am I'm even though I'm smaller, I have a, like that little bit of aggression, and for me, it's always it's always uh, finding someone on the other team that I know would be a challenge and like go for it, like right. like yeah. try and try and seek them out. If I get the opportunity in the field, not to get beat by them or beat them one on one or whatever it may be, to 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 outdo my opponent, you know. And I think yeah. that's that's right along the lines with, you know, Kenny. You're a big dude. You your physicality is such a big part of the game. And you know, Kenny was fourth uh, fourth on the list for most dominant tackles. And I think for people who wow. don't know what rugby is, that's that's putting someone back behind the gain line. That's mm-hmm. like that's like being a linebacker and making the running back land south when he was going north um you know so you know kenny's a a specialist in that area you know we just got to keep him from getting yellow cards (laughs) he's the ref's favorite friend isn't he aren't you (laughs) hitting him a little too early a little too high he's a big guy how's he supposed to go down that low the wrong guy it was the wrong guy it was the wrong guy oh sure sure kenny sure they flagged the wrong person (laughs) <laughs> so let, let me ask you a question. No, let me just say this to you. Uh, one of the things that one of the things I heard you earlier say that you actually shared food with your neighbors and stuff like that. So breaking bread um, yep. with your neighbors is something we should do. We should get to know our neighbors and we should love our neighbors, and respect our neighbors. Just recently in America, you saw this. You know the the, the situation we're having with with just priest brutality and just racism in general. What what kind of message would you give as a Fijian to? And I hope I said that right, a Fijian. To uh, yeah. to Americans and say, hey, look, you know, you should look at your neighbor as your brother. You should look as your your neighbor as your sister. You know, what kind yeah. of message would you would you like to to give to to people? And if you don't want to give a message, that's okay. But it just seems that you, when you talked about having an a Indian neighbor and having a different neighbor here, yeah, and yeah. you shared their holidays and their food, and you went to church. I mean, that that's for, for me, that's community. You know, that's, that's, that's being part of something. And, and yeah. I just like to take every, sh- every show we do and give a nice message to people. Yeah. And so if you could give a nice message, what would you say to all the, all the idiots who run around this country? I'd say uh, love. Love is a big word. And, man, if you, if you just take the time to love your neighbor uh, as you love yourself, it's, it, it's a big thing. And secondly is humble, humble to listen to other people's story. Like we, we, we are so quick to judge people where we don't even know the backstory of it. Right. You're right. Just be humble, be humble to listen to other people's story and mm-hmm. share the love. You, you, um, when the first Maybe. time you saw Nate, you see a guy who's not, not the size of you, but not, not the color of you. What was the first thing you thought when you saw him? Man, he hit me twice at practice. I think that was our first practice. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I hate I'm that like... I'm known for that. Hey. <laughs> no, but I gotta yeah, protect yeah, but, myself but, when you got 260 pounds coming at you. You, you better hit him first. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, I was playing for Belmont, and Nate was uh, the captain for the U.S. So he was one I looked up to still to today. His uh, the way he approaches the game, his coaching, and his uh, commitment to God. He, he's one of the guys I look up to, and yeah, they got look, me on this show. And, yeah, oh yeah, we look up to him too, man. And he's a yeah. uh, you know he's an inspiration for us, and he he brings us guests. We just, you know, let me be honest, this is his show. We just tag along for the ride. And, uh, and we get to meet people like yourself, and we get to, get to hear some inspiration, inspiring stories and, and hear some things about different countries and different cultures. So you know, I'm honored to, 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 hear, to meet you and talk to you. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's funny. With Nate, is, I, I, him and I are a little bit, a lot different, but we're alike in a lot of ways. We have, we have a belief, but he's a stronger belief than I do. I, I come from a sports background. I played sports and I love sports. Never played a profession like he did. But there's something to that character, something to that personality that makes you look up to someone. And Nate's 20 years younger than me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 20 years younger than I am. So, again, you're, you, hit, you hit the nail right on the head when you say he's, he's someone you can look up to and, yeah. and, and be a mentor. And also, I like, I like that he coaches and you coach. So when you coach young people – do you give them that same message you just gave us about love and, and about, uh, about humbleness and about patience and, uh, and, about, and about acceptance? Do you give that same thing to your, to your players? Your, your, yes. Your coach? Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. That's good, man. That yeah, was, Kenny, good. Kenny, Kenny's definitely equipping, equipping whoever he comes across with, you know, things that, things that are just positive. Like, no one can, no one can dispute against – somebody who's, you know, genuinely trying to love on other people or be humble enough to sit there and, and put their pride aside. You know, I think right. Kenny, Kenny spoke about uh, MMG. It's Mighty Men of God. It's a group that we have. It's kind of our Bible study group with Legion, um, and, and it goes way beyond rugby. But uh, the, whole, the whole point of it is that, like, love is a covenant. It's not, like, earned or, or gained. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's loving people regardless of anything, you know, and God, God loves us that way. So that's what we try and we try and portray yeah. that. And I think, uh, yeah, Kenny, your message, man, it's just like, these are the things that we can, uh, it doesn't always have to be through God. I think some people get turned away by God and then that's when God equips us with different people to get through to them and, and talk to yeah. them. But like things like humble, I mean, you just being able to teach kids what it means and be an example of what it means to be humble. And Jasa Veramalua, it's like Kenny was telling me one of the people he looks up to the most is Jasa yeah, Veramalua, yeah. who won yeah. the Olympics as a San Diego Legion player. And now Kenny's his teammate. And I'd say Jasa, Save, uh, any of the guys on our team that are Fijian have always been extremely humble, yeah. you know? Awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, good, that's uh, good upbringing. That's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was – that was a big thing. Uh, I was lucky to have Chasa as my roommate when we were traveling because he would wake up at 4 in the morning. I'd be sleeping, and he'll wake me up. Hey, wake up, wake up. We got to pray. Yeah, yeah I'm like, it, it, it was kind of, it was cool because he grounded me. He reminded me of where I came from because that's, that's where I started, like, getting back on track, joining the MMG group and all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I found interesting when you were talking about uh, you know, breaking bread with your neighbors that um, you, and correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you said that your neighbor, one was Muslim and one was Hindu, right. Yeah, which, you know, in any other kind of country, they'd be at, at war with each other. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. And for you to say that, that kind of hit me when I, when I heard you say that, I was like, wow, I think that's pretty damn cool because yeah. that is what this world should be. Yeah. Not who you pray to or what you think or, you know, we're all brothers and sisters. I mean, why not get along? Why do we have to yeah. fight because you're Muslim or you're Hindu or you're Catholic or you're Protestant? And yeah, you have a, you have a great message there. And I, and I thought that that hit me when I, when I heard that. And it wasn't just about the food, although I, I am a little hungry right now. <laughs> but it's, um, it's kind of lunchtime, boys. Um, but I'm thinking, what am I going to eat? So. <laughs> no, it just amazes me that, you know, in your culture, 
that in an area where, I mean, pretty much from what I read, your town is predominantly Indian. Yeah. So to have that and with the Fijians, that combination and different religious backgrounds, yeah, to share bread like that and not think twice about it, that's fantastic. That's, again, that's good upbringing, very cultural upbringing. Yeah. That that stuff is separate. That so, doesn't. So why why have you going to your house? Me? I, I come here and invited me to your, your house for dinner, homie. Yeah, huh? come on. <laughs> <Let's say bread. laughs> see, see, you on you on you on the podcast talking all this crap, but you ain't invited no brother up for dinner. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All those shows on ESPN that we did together. <laughs> I cook at every what, show. What do you do? Every show. <laughs> what do you <laughs> what do you do now? Rugby not there you're missing rugby you want you excited to get back to it oh Can yeah to start? i miss it i miss it because uh the new zealand uh comp is going on right now and man uh -huh. you just wish you were playing we're um, yeah just right now uh just hitting the gym playing touch with the boys uh get some run around i don't know if you know touch it's uh you know touch right yeah touch kind of like touch black rugby. football yeah. like black yeah nate, nate, nate's been enlightening us as yeah, we go yeah. along, you know what I'm saying? So, we're we're the the interesting thing. I know I can talk rugby now if you want to talk rugby a little <laughs> bit. Don't get too technical and stuff. Get too technical. <laughs> but, uh, but I can talk a little bit. Diego, let's play touch, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, not me, bro. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll be on the sidelines I'm cooking. Too old, brother. I'm too old. <laughs> My knees are buckling right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm already feeling the pain. Because, <laughs> Kenny, you're probably dying to hit somebody right now, right? That, <laughs> not, not like hit them, but that feeling, you know? Because I played yeah. high school football, too. Like, you know, these oh, guys. Chef, like, here we go about talking about the old days again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 Every episode we have, Chef Rock goes back and talks about the days when he was in high school and he played football. Oh, yeah, let me so, tell you a story. We're, we're going to let him talk about it right that. now. I, go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear that. I wanna go hear ahead, that. talk okay. about it, Chef Rock, well, go ahead. Here, here's something that's really cool that I'm doing right now, which kind of brings that football stuff involved that we're talking about. Uh, I got asked by this author out of East Hartford, Connecticut, the town I was uh, brought up in and played football in. And this kid played, and he won the state championship, and he was an Olympic junior uh state champion wrestler as well. He wrote this book called The Boys of East Hartford. And it's all about football from like 1970 up to now. And he asked me, uh, it's a book on Amazon, and he asked me to be the narrator. So for the last three weeks, I've been narrating this book. So yeah. it's bringing back all these flashbacks of people I knew. And it's really cool. It's very time consuming, uh, but it'll come out probably in about a month. It'll be on Amazon on the audio book. It'll be me doing it i have to i have to tell you i gotta stop myself because i start doing howard cosell you know and then he's coming around that corner. i'll get it i'll get it <laughs> okay i'll make sure to get it i'll make sure to get it yeah it's, it's a it's a fun book because it really kind of be, does play by play but he also talks about the strategy of the game and why you know it was very competitive in, our, in the state we were in for football it wasn't yeah. texas you know but all those kids went on some some kids went pro like a, a guy I played against in high school was Bill Romanowski. Bill Romanowski was a linebacker. He's got, he was two pro, uh, two time all pro. He's got four Super Bowl rings, played for the 49ers and the Broncos. So he had an extensive career. I didn't know him then, you know, I didn't know all the guys, but uh, I was the captain of the, the, the team my senior year. And um, they got all the captains from all over the state. And we did a TV commercial, a tuxedo company. And it was at the end of the season when they shot it. So during the season, I was a running back. I played with a broken wrist the whole season. So they just tape it up and I played. So when I finished the season, I had a cast put on it. It was like from my fingertips all the way up to here. So we go to for the, do the commercial and the guy looks at me and he goes, you can't do that commercial with a cast on. So I went in the back and found a hacksaw, like cut the sucker off around the wrist. <laughs> and I licked myself. So I'm wearing a full white tuxedo. We're on our way to the, the location, and it's bleeding all over the cuff of the tuxedo. <laughs> and when I got there, oh, my God, they had to hide my arm behind my back. They were so pissed yeah. off. But it was all the captains for the whole state, you know, and we were all in it together. And it was cool because I played against some of these guys, but to get them all together, like you guys, when you get together, that was pretty special. I'll, I'll always remember that. We all talked and joked and 
It was the end of our smart history and ladies, football. Ladies and Pretty cool. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the Chef Rock uh, football reminisce section. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next week, it's going to be about my wrestling career. Listen, yeah. man, I, I, I love it. I love him so much, man. I gave him a hard time about it. But it's very funny. Yeah. I, I love so him Chef, death, man. We, hey. we, uh, we coach plenty of knuckleheads like that that would cut hey. their cast off no. to – get ready to get ready for the video or social media or something like that. Exactly. Isn't that wild? You know? So, so Kenny, what we like to do is uh, at the end of this, at the end of our show. And we want, I first want to thank you for coming on and being our guest. And I'm sorry about the technical delays that started the, the show. And that was, that was all on me. And short time is going to be giving me a hard time The producer a little bit later about how to correct myself, but uh, it's all good, man. But yeah, uh, it's all good. But we we enjoyed you, man. So, parting words you like to say, you know, besides love and you know and humbleness and respect. Anything else you like to say? Shout out to your family or something. Uh, shout out to Nate Dog, man. Hey, hey stop that. Me. I remember, Kenny. Okay. I want you to I want you to finish on 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 this question here. Um. Chef Rock's talking about a book, a book that he's, he's doing the audio. It kind of got me thinking, you know, we, we got a, we got a book that we got, we want to write. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately 2020 got cut short. Uh, both of us will be back for 2021, uh, in San Diego. But, uh, how do you, how do you, um, what are you going to do between now and then, or what's the, the standard that you're going to set for yourself? Uh, to get ready to go into next season so that we can lift that trophy and win that championship in the MLR? Uh, consistency. That's what I've, um, I've, I've been trying to focus on. Consistency and discipline, waking up every morning, same time, showing up to the gym. That's why I've, I've, this is my second week going. Try to be consistent um, and disciplined. Try to be not eating McDonald's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm going in and out. You're I know. I know. Man. I love fried chicken, man. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good message, Kenny. It's a good yeah. message. All, the young, yeah. on, all our young listeners, man, consistency. Take you a long way when you just yeah, stay dedicated, does, does. stay committed, right? Yeah. Love you, Thank dude. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank man. you. Appreciate Thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Quick tap. Quick tap. Quick tap. tap out. Quick tap out. Tap out. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Thank you. Hola, Vanaka. Hola. Mode, mode, mode. Mode, mode.